Tell the Odair champs and welcome to the show. And have a look at this. Boom. The big daddy of gaming laptops. Now I have reviewed the 15 inch Alienware gaming laptop. I'll leave a link. You might want to check that review out. And I love that gaming laptop. And I said the Alienware are the daddy of gaming laptop. Well this is the big daddy. The 17 inch. And as you can see look how big it is. It is big. You can see my laptop tray just fits this 17 inch behemoth. So this is for serious gamers. When you whip this thing out, people know you're not messing about. Now I've had to wait a little bit of time to get my hands on this. So this is my three month review of this. I want to make it clear I haven't had this laptop for three months. This is a review unit and it has been around Australia, bashed and crashed, been torture tested, no doubt. And it's still holding up very well today. There are a few scuffs here and there, but all in all, it's held up very well. Now, this thing is for serious gaming. We're talking 120 hertz G-Sync 1440p display, GTX 1070 graphics. This pretty much destroys any game. And it's the best gaming laptop experience I've ever had. It starts at around 1199 US, goes up to 3.8K, something like that. In Australia, they start at around 2600 and go into the high 3000. Thousands. This one has the i7 6700 HQ 2.6 gigahertz the one in the last generation XPS 15 I know this part well they actually have updated Cabby Lake versions of this 2400 megahertz RAM and the new 7700 Cabby Lake processors so definitely if you're going to buy one get the Cabby Lake model in terms of this one here you're not going to get that much advantage out of getting the Cabby Lake model because this has a G-Sync monitor and the graphics card's gonna suck the battery anyway. If you get the 4K or 1080p version, you will get some battery savings with Cabby Lake. But in terms of gaming, you're not gonna get that much more performance out of the Cabby Lake than what you do with this Skylake model. But in every other way, it's basically the same. I hope to be getting a 13 inch Cabby Lake model in soon. It has 16 gigs RAM, also 512 gigabyte SSD, one terabyte hard drive, GTX 1070, eight gigabyte version there, 99 watt hour battery, 240 watt power supply. Killer Ethernet has this awesome 1440, 120 hertz, 400 nit G-Sync display. Comes in at 4.4 kilos, that's 9.7 pounds. It's about three centimeters thick, so it's actually really thin. Even though this laptop has a big footprint, because it's a 17 inch display, of course, it's actually quite thin for a gaming laptop. It is a really cutting edge piece of industrial design here. You'll see a lot of new gaming laptops sort of paying homage to this design. As you can see, you can handle it. I mean, it is big, there's no doubt. It's not that, it's not that thick though for a gaming laptop. It's quite understated, even though it has like a brutal utilitarian look. It's uniquely Alienware. You won't mistake it for any other gaming laptop. And it has all those color accents all over it that you can control with the Alien FX software. So it's awesome. But you can turn all that off. Some of these gaming laptops, I really don't like their aesthetic. This one I do, I love it. Lots of premium parts in this. This is a plastic top here. You have aluminium chassis, you have copper, you have magnesium in this thing. This thing is engineering beast. You have that offset screen. So the screen hinge is here and the cooling vents are offset at the back there. Aluminium bottom there, you have the subwoofer there. Ventilation here, you can take this off easily, upgrade the parts in there. Open her up and boom, have a look at this. Beautiful soft touch deck here. Keyboard is great. End key rollover, has all your macros. It's a fantastic keyboard, believe me. Of course, you can light up these individual zones with the Alien FX and all the accents. And as you may or may not be able to see, you'll see the infrared light going off here. And that's the eye tracking technology it has. So Windows Hello works, it logs you in super fast. You just look at it and it just logs you in straight away. Works really well. The eye tracking is really amazing um, it's creepy too like I don't know how much old you use it but it's amazing technology and as you can see this display is very nice you have your 720p webcam up there and your two mics 120 Hertz 1440p g-sync and it gets very bright 400 nits there it's around 80 percent srgb you're not going to be doing color work with this but, but for gaming it's fantastic and the games look super crisp it pops if you go off to a 45 degree angle you will lose a little bit of contrast but for gaming the fantastic display and super connected gaming with that 1440p 120 hertz gc it's just gaming on the next level with the 1070 there you're able to push enough frames and it's the best gaming experience i've 
I've ever had in a laptop bar none. Trackpad has that Synoptics driver in it and I don't like it because I have to usually scroll three or four times to track the whole screen because it's a big screen. But the 15 inch trackpad was really good and they just look like they're the same trackpad so I don't know why but this one isn't as good as the 15 inch. But it is usable, I messed with the settings there and it was usable after that. You have some speakers on the front here, you have that subwoofer underneath, the sound is really rich, meaty, great for gaming, fantastic for gaming. A little bit of distortion at the higher end of the volume there, but I think you'll be happy with the sound. Port. See how I'll pick it up one handed mate, come on, that's not too bad is it? On the left hand side you have the vents, you have USB-C, USB 3, headphone and mic jack. It's good that they separate those things. On the back you have an ethernet, display port out, HDMI 2.0, Thunderbolt 3, Alienware graphics amplifier port and the power jack there. Also you have the two vents. So on the left hand side you have another USB 3 and a vent there. So having Thunderbolt 3 and the Alienware graphics amplifier port, what that basically means is you can use any type of graphics amplifier. You can use the Thunderbolt 3 one or the Alienware one. Now for what it's worth, the Alienware is the best. It is the fastest graphics amplifier. The only downside is you can only use it with Alienware products. Now I'll just go through the display brightness here. That's 50%, 75 and then 100%. Why not crank her up to 50%? Now in terms of performance, this thing games like an absolute champ, like it smashed everything. All the benchmarks I've done compared to any other gaming laptop, absolutely smashed it. Pretty much within a B's diaphragm of what a GTX 1070 can do on the desktop, there's very little difference. This GTX 1070 in here is slightly underclocked compared to the desktop variant, but it has more CUDA cores. And the difference is under 10%, so very close. Temperatures and noise, well the noise wasn't actually that bad because the temperatures don't get that high. I could not get over 70 degrees with this, so I'm actually going to overclock it. I will be doing a gaming review and I will be trying to overclock it because having a gaming laptop that doesn't get over 70 degrees is quite unique and I've never experienced that before. So stay tuned for that gaming review, but just know that this thing here for gaming, it's going to kill anything 1440p high settings, it'll play it over 60 frames per second. So we're talking Battlefield 1 high settings, 89 frames per second, and all of these are at 1440p in high settings. 89 frames per second Battlefield 1, 82 frames per second Crisis 3 1440p high settings, GTA 5 1440p high and very high settings, 134 frames per second, Juice X or DSX as I've been told, 70 frames per second at 1440p high settings. To play that at 70 frames per second, you can see it games like a desktop. And when I've done the Time Spy stress test, it scored 99%, so virtually no frame drops whatsoever in that stress test. And as I said, the temperatures were in the 60s, like low 60s, never got over 70, both CPU and GPU. Now the fans, they're not as loud as my PS4, and because the temperatures are well controlled, for a gaming laptop, they're not that loud. Now the downside to this awesome 120 hertz screen is it's G-Sync, and that means that you cannot turn the graphics card off. You can disable it, but then you're left with VGA quality resolution, which sucks. So so virtually you have to have the graphics card on all the time so you're only going to get around three and a half hours battery life out of a 99 watt hour battery so that's the best you can hope for now if you get the 4k model or the 1080p version i'll be expecting five hours for the 4k version and six seven hours for the 1080p version although i can only comment on this one here the 1440p 120 hertz three hours, three and a half, that's where you'll get battery life. Now, as I said, it's easily upgradable. You actually have three M.2 slots. You have two full-size ones, you have one half-size one, you finch either hard drive or SATA SSD. You can upgrade to 32 gigs RAM, two RAM slots there. Very easy to upgrade, couple of screws off. Take the bottom panel off and upgrade to your heart's content there. And as you'll see inside, it is a really well engineered machine. Who is this for? This is for someone that doesn't want a desktop, wants a portable gaming machine with no compromises. You're getting desktop performance in a 17 inch package. It's not that thick. All right, it's big compared to other laptops, but you're talking a GTX 1070 in here. So no compromise in gaming performance. Maybe if you've got a desktop gaming machine, maybe you might want to try an Alienware 
13 or something like that but if this is going to be your only gaming machine this is a fantastic choice built like a tank games like a champ and the big daddy impressed me very much so I'm going to give this my Tally Ho Top Draw Award Best in Class, Best 17 Inch Gaming Laptop. My previous favourite was the 17 Inch Predator. This one's classier, it's thinner, it's quieter, performs better and it's not as hot, so yeah. So if this review has been helpful, give me a thumbs up there. I'd like to really thank you guys for watching. I've got lots more tech content coming soon and stay tuned for my gaming review of this beast. And if you're new around here, why not subscribe? And until next time guys, Tally Ho.